That looks very creamy, sir. I what's, know. What's in this? You'll find out. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we have something in our coffee, you'll be alerted to it. Welcome to day 14 of The Road Back. Keto chow. Yeah, but what kind? Caramel macchiato. Very good. Well, Lord knows <laughs> I've drank enough of it. So we are having a simple breakfast today. It is a cup of coffee with a tablespoon of butter, and we each have a half a serving of Keto Chow Caramel Macchiato. Oh, it tastes so good. Why? Because we can. Because we can and because we want to. Yeah. It's so, so good. Um, it hit me this morning that Thanksgiving is next week. Yeah. And I'm in the middle of a bunch of epic fails on recipes and it is really bothering me. I don't want you to feel like you've got a, a clock in Die Hard strapped to you. Really? Because TikTok... Yeah, uh, don't stop. It, it's it's in a week. <laughs> it is, but you know what? You do best when you're backed up against a wall. I, do, I don't want to say that to you as your wife. I hate to see you stressed out, but I'm telling you what, when you are like, you've got to have that perfect intersection of like, I'm doing this and desperation and right there, that's a magical spot right there. The problem is, is that one of the recipes includes beef. And epic fails with current beef prices is right. extremely frustrating. So you're stressed, not because the recipe doesn't work, but because... Well, it's both. Because it costs a lot of money. Yeah, the chickens are enjoying some ground beef. That's all I can say. Here's what's great about surrounding yourself with carnivores, even as pets. Nothing goes to waste. Mm. Because for the most part, everything that we're using... I mean, we're not even using sweeteners, really. So... No. Like, you can give it to your pets because they're like, oh, did that uh, boiled egg not turn out right? I'll fix it. We did come up with one yesterday that we've been working on and working on, and we finally, I think, perfected it. So I'm excited about that. Yes. The only thing is, is that our website is under construction, and I received an email instruction this morning saying, please don't change anything else on the website, which means as we do a couple of recipes over the next uh, week or two, there, it won't be a, on our website. So right. what we'll probably do is create a PDF and put it like down below as we do them, uh, including the one for the hollandaise sauce that we made yesterday. Because I can't put in, I cannot make any changes to our website now. That's what she said. But no can, changes. Which we want to honor that. We don't want to right. make anybody's job more complicated, especially when they are adding a lot of beauty to our life and right. website. So um, on the docket for today, I have a couple things to cut. Then got some uh, videos to edit at home. Still have to fix the garbage disposal. And we're fasting today. We're not, clearly. <laughs> Obviously. I just wanted a reaction out of you. Like, wait, what? <laughs> well, I've got some meetings this morning. I have some more writing to do and holiday curating for, for church. So it's going to be a full day. Anthony, I know you're like, why am I sitting here? Well, yesterday we got a... You got a present. Present from Mary Jo Capolos. And it said, Anthony, I understand... It's actually on the front of the package. Anthony, I understand you like these. They are too spicy for me. Yes, I'm a whoosh. Enjoy. P.S. You don't have to share. So I am that, just wait like... Wait a second. You don't have to share. I thought that does, that rule doesn't exist in this house, except for on the first day of a present. It's the first day of a present. So if he can... <laughs> Slam it back in a day. What did you get, Anne? I thought, how fun. No, 
There you go. There you go. I think you were supposed to open the front part, maybe. There's nothing These there. boxes can be such a pain to open up. It's not Mary Jo's fault. Try like, folding them. Some of the boxes that we get, folding I'm like, them. where is the opening for this box? There's oh, there you go. Amazing technology and box folding. What? Aww. I told you. Oh. Oh. Working good. It's the pizza. The pizza flavor. The pizza flavor. Anthony likes those. I brought a box, a package into the car and he ate the entire bag. Thanks so much, Mary Jo. All right, I'm heading out, sir. What are you doing? I am ordering some high key cookie vanilla wafers for a recipe because they, we don't have any no we don't have any because the last time we got them i ate three bags in a day or two days because <laughs> <laughs> they really do remind me of nilla wafers and i love them so i don't keep them in the house but now i need them for a recipe so how busy am i how busy are you my brand new 16 inch macbook pro m1 edition it came yesterday morning. And you haven't set it up yet. It is, look at this. It is still sitting here, like sealed. When is the last time you saw me get a new Apple Never. product and sit here? But I do, here's the problem. Once I open this box, I will be consumed with transferring everything from this laptop to this one because this one needs to go up for sale to pay for this one. This one I'm hoping is going to speed up my productivity because believe it or not, this little computer is supposedly 10 times faster than that big desktop, which means then I can sell my desktop as well. We shall see. But yeah, I know I'm going to get super consumed, so I haven't opened it, but do you want the... Uh, yeah, I want to be here for this moment. You ready? Yep. Oh. oh, nothing better than opening something that's Apple and new. Anything new. Don't You don't get excited when you open something new. I love opening things that are new, but there's something magical about a computer new. Oh, uh, let's see this. Let's see. Uh-oh. I promise I will not work on this today. How Ooh. can something so tiny. It looks the same. Be so mighty. It's slightly heavier. It's slightly heavier. I think it's like the same size as the old one. Yeah. It's thicker than the old Don't one. Don't confuse them. Well, no, I won't because this one is, is squarer. And even though they're both 16 inches, this one actually has a bigger... Oh, it turned on. <laughs> it turned on. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's talking it's to me. It's got a slightly bigger screen because they made the bevel smaller. But again, for me, it's more about performance and the fact that it's supposed to edit videos much faster and I'm excited about it, but yeah, now I want to play with it, but I have to go to work. There is a huge difference between these two chicken bone broth stock type of options, even though they're right next to one another. Usually there's a flag that goes up in my brain when I see first ingredient is chicken stock. Like, you know, this is a motel with air conditioning why wouldn't it be the first ingredient? And that made me wonder, what are the other ingredients? And as you can see, there are a ton of ingredients, including canola oil and cane sugar and all kinds of stuff, cornstarch. Whereas this, the chicken bone broth, the only thing in here is organic chicken stock, organic chicken flavor, which contains organic chicken. And that's it. Okay. I've been putting this off long enough. It is time to change the garbage disposal. I've had a new one for two days and I just have not had a desire to put it in. Mostly because this one has some caked in food in the bottom and I just don't want to deal with that mess. But I need to before it begins to smell and that kind of stuff. It shouldn't take too long. It should be a very easy swap because I pretty much bought the same one. This is the old one right here. It's an Evolution. I bought it at Home Depot. And this is the new one which is also an evolution, but I bought it at Lowe's. So they're different colors because I think the company like color codes based on where they're selling it, which is fine. It should be a very easy swap. Actually, it should be easier than most because the one that I got from Home Depot came with a power cord, whereas that one you actually have to swap it out. So that should save a couple of minutes. But first thing I need to do is get everything out underneath here, 
so that I can pull that one down relatively easily. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and drop the old one, which if you wanna know how to do that, it's actually very easy. There's a little piece right up here and you take this tool that comes with them and then you're going to kind of just pull a little bit and the whole thing will drop down, but you gotta remember that you are connected to pipes in the back. So I'm gonna disconnect those pipes first. So unfortunately, we've had water leaks under here and this is an old, old cabinet. So that's one of the reasons we need to redo our kitchen because this whole thing is sunk. But we got that off. Now we can just drop the whole thing and then disconnect the dishwasher. So, see, it comes down very easy. But then you have your dishwasher hose, which is right there. So we gotta disconnect that. So we loosen this bolt. Right, and pull off the dishwasher hose. And then we can pull this out. And we're gonna go ahead and put this in the sink and dump that water out. Okay, guess what? I thought it would be a little bit easier because you didn't have to attach a power cord and they do give you a power cord, but they don't attach it for some silly reason. So we need to attach it, which this is actually really easy. You shouldn't even be afraid of electricity. I really wouldn't pay, you know, a company a hundred, a hundred fifty dollars to do this. It really is very simple. So to attach the power cord, whether you're doing a new power cord or just taking the old one off, you're just going to simply unscrew this right here. That gives you access to the wires. We can pull that off. And then in here are your wires. So here's your two wires. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little piece that they give you, they give you everything, and you're going to just screw it into this hole and tighten it. Then after you have that, I'll turn it so you can see it. What you do is you take these wires and you push them through and you grab them on the inside and you push it through so that you can attach it. Very simple. You're gonna take your green wire and you're going to use that screw and attach it there. That's your ground. So right there. So that's one part. Now you're gonna take these other two wires. Where's the other one? right here and we're going to attach them to this so all you have to do is take this twist it take your wire nut screw it on that'll attach the two wires and then do the same thing for the other one some people like to put electrical tape down there i don't i'm not bothered with that we're going to take this now and pull it out more so that everything fits. Now we take the plate, we put it back on here, slide it underneath that screw. These little notches hold it in place and we tighten it down. So that's how you wire up your garbage disposal. And now again, if you're replacing an old garbage disposal, you don't need to buy a new cord unless your old one is bad. You could just take the one off of your existing garbage disposal. Along with that, if you're replacing an existing garbage disposal and not putting a new one in, you don't need this, unless you wanna be bothered changing this out. Uh, but pretty much all garbage disposals use the same clamp system. So you can use the one that's already in there and you don't have to worry about you know, something leaking and having a seal. So just go ahead and save this one off to the side. Or if you want, you can change out the one that you have in the sink. I'm not gonna be bothered because that's more time consuming. Next thing you need to do is attach the drain. And you can do two things. Use the brand new one that they gave you, or you could be lazy like Joe and take the one off the old garbage disposal. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because you can see the old one that I had was shorter that fits our drain, or is this one I'm gonna have to cut? So we're just gonna use the old one. So this is pretty simple. You just take your piece, you take that little flat end, you push it in here you'll feel it lock in place that's up in that ridge now. Then you take this ring that they give you and then you're gonna try to do this on camera. Squeeze it and get it up onto that rubber. And I just twist it to make sure it's all the way in and that'll lock that in place and keep it from leaking. Next up, we have to install it into the sink. Now this is very easy, but it can be a pain because this particular garbage disposal is a little bit heavy and you have to try to hold it up with one hand perfectly straight while you use the locking mechanism to twist it and lock it in. Before we do that, 
we are going to attach the dishwasher so that we don't have to do it from behind. So that goes on here. And And then we simply tighten this bolt. That locks it in. Okay, so now that that's on, we're gonna simply hold this up and lock it in place. This is actually easy, but a pain at the same time, because again, this is a heavy one, so I have to hold it up with one hand. You're gonna use this tool, put it in here, and then you're gonna turn it to lock it in place. And what it's locking in place is, you'll see this little knob right here. On the one that's sitting up there, you're gonna get those here, and then when you twist it, it pulls up on here and pulls it up and locks it. So let's see if we can do this one time. And it's in, there you go. Now we just have to connect the plumbing in the back, which there's no easy way to show you how to do that. Next, we're gonna check to see if it leaks. No leaks up there, and no leaks in the back. And that's how you change a garbage disposal. I have no idea why I'm putting this in the vlog, but I figure we needed something to add into the vlog. Very, very simple process. No reason to be paying anybody $100 or $200 to come and change out your garbage disposal, especially if you already have one. It's a very simple thing. It takes less than 10 minutes. It took me that long, and that was including trying to film it. One thing I do want to say, it comes with this tool. Don't lose this tool. We generally leave it in the cabinet with the garbage disposal because if you ever have a clog or it gets jammed up, what you do is you put this tool in the bottom and you twist a little bit and that will completely unjam it. I'm thinking for dinner tonight, we're gonna make it super simple and just do bacon and eggs. I'm not really in the mood for anything else. I don't know about Rachel. If she really wants something else, we can always brown up some ground beef, but I made this bacon yesterday or we smoked it after it's been curing for the last week and a half. So I wanna go ahead and slice that up and we're gonna try that for dinner. Okay, so we have this bacon. Now people ask us what our bacon ends. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off a piece here so you have a nice straight edge. And what we do is we take these pieces and we cut them into small chunks and that's great for adding to chili or stews. Anytime you would wanna have little chunks of bacon or you could even put it into an air fryer on your Blackstone and fry them up and have like bacon candy. Normally I would do this with a meat slicer but I don't feel like bringing the meat slicer out so I'm just going to cut it by hand which if you have a nice sharp knife, you can do. Not every piece is gonna be the same thickness, but that's okay. When you are making your own bacon at home, the easiest way to slice this, whether you're using a slicer or a knife, is make sure it's nice and cold. So don't try to slice it when you take it off the smoker. Put it in the refrigerator, leave it overnight, and then try to slice it, because what happens is, is the fat will get harder, and it makes it much easier to slice, and you're not getting a bunch of tears. So this was a half a slab of pork belly that we got from Costco. One half we put on the Kamado Joe and we cooked it brisket style and we ate that for dinner a couple weeks ago. And then the second half we put into a cure for bacon. Now, normally I do a dry rub for my bacon. I wanted to try something different and this was a wet brine. So it was a little bit different, same idea, but instead of just putting a bunch of salt on it, you actually put it into like a liquid brining solution. Let's go ahead and see how much we got out of a half a slab. Okay, let's go ahead and zero out the scale. Put on the bacon. Almost two pounds. Three pounds. Four pounds. 4.8 pounds, or it's 4.79. So we got about four and a half pounds of bacon out of a half a slab. I'm pretty impressed with that because by us, most of the stores are selling thick cut bacon for between seven to $10 a pound. So figure $8 a pound, that's about $36 worth of bacon. 
And I think we spent about $45 on the entire, you know, like pork belly. So, you know, you figure you got an entire meal, plus you got $36 in bacon for less than $50. And you know what's in this bacon. You don't have to worry about, is there extra sugar in there? Are there any other chemicals in there? I really enjoy making our own bacon. And to me, it tastes better. Plus, you get to determine how thick it is. So Rachel's on her way home. I'm going to go put some of this onto the Blackstone outside. So I'm going to try something a little different with Rachel's eggs. She loves scrambled eggs and fluffy omelets, which I'm not a big fan of scrambled eggs. Uh, omelets, I don't mind so long as you're putting a bunch of junk in it. But I'm not a big fan of just scrambled eggs plain. She loves them. So instead of cooking hers on the Blackstone, I'm going to make hers in the Innova Precision Oven. Uh, supposedly, if you cook it at 100% humidity, you get a really fluffy egg and you don't get that overcooked that you would normally get when you're cooking it on a pan. So we're gonna cook at 180 degrees for five minutes at 100% humidity. So as soon as that gets up to temperature, we'll stick the eggs in. Okay, Rachel just walked in the door. So we're gonna go ahead and put these eggs in. So this is five eggs. And then I added some Redmond season salt to it. Go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna start the timer. I am ready for some dinner, yo. Dinner's basic. What is this beautiful thing? So I decided you like fluffy eggs. I do love which fluffy I'm eggs. Which I'm not a fan of scrambled eggs unless there's a whole bunch of junk in it. Well, look at that. So I tried making the eggs in the Inova oven because it's supposed to be, when you cook it at 100% humidity, it's supposed to make them really fluffy. So that is five eggs. Mmm. And then I added Redmond seasoned salt to it. That is really good. What an, it, it's almost like flan. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. Here, I'll take a little piece, piece of it just to. Yeah, just to try. So I know what the texture is like. It's like flan. It's got the texture of flan. Yeah, How it really nice. does. But it's eggs. Mm. And then this is our bacon, but I made this bacon different than normal. Normally I do um, a dry cure where you just take the salt and the number two, and you rub it all in with mm. a little bit of allulose. This was done in a liquid where it soaks in a liquid for about 10 days. And supposedly it allows like more of the flavorings and the seasonings to get into the meat because it's sitting in a liquid. I actually really like it. That's good. Right? Mm-hmm. Very different. Yeah. Oh, I love it. How's work? Yo, Christmas is a full-time job, <laughs> right? Like just preparing for, for Christmas. And I was working my mama's fingers to the bone, cut, cutting out stuff and, you know, prepping crafts because, again, anytime you have, I mean, and that's the same thing for with school or anything for teachers, that um, you have so much more to do during that season and you have to have like kind of quick turnover. Right. So you have to prep as much as possible to make it easy for teachers and dude, just so much to do. You want some soda? No. <laughs> Dr. Barry and Nisha put up a great video yesterday. I wish I would have had that video two years ago. What was it about? How to wean yourself off of diet soda. Like now I'm using Zevia and even these because we went so long without the sweetener Whoa. are very, very sweet for me. But it was something that I never thought about. But, you know, they love like Topo Chico and the mm -hmm. sparkling water. And they both admitted to they were huge soda fiends. Like Dr. Berry was drinking like a two liter bottle of Diet Mountain Dew every day. So he said what you do, so I'll leave a link for that video right over here. Uh, but he said what you do is you start off if you're way, way into Diet Coke or Nisha's yeah. was Diet Dr. Pepper. You take, you pour it into a glass over ice, but only like three quarters of the way full. And then you top it off the rest of the way with Topo Chico or with, you know, San Pellegrino. Oh, wow. So you don't take away the fizz. Yeah, you still have But you're kind of watering it down a little bit, but nothing where you notice it. And he said after a week or two weeks of that, then maybe you go to half and you do half and half. And then you'll find that you're slowly drinking less. And even if you stick it only half and half and never, you know, go down even more, yeah, there's still that you're still way only drinking 50% as bad as you were. So think about when I was drinking my 128 ounce cooler of soda every day, if I would have done 64 ounces of Diet Coke and then 64 ounces of San Pellegrino, that I would still get the flavor. I would still get all the bubbles. 
but I wouldn't be getting nearly as much garbage out of the Diet Coke that I was drinking. Well, you drinking sort 120 of ounces. lived that out once you found aha. Yeah. You know, in the in like 7-Eleven in Wawa and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd satisfying my need for that bubbly drink. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, so far as I know around here anyway, Wawa is the only place that has that in their soda fountain because right. I like soda fountain drinks. Mm -hmm. There's something about them. It's more bubbly. Yeah, I don't know what it is. So I really enjoy that. So uh, day 13 and 14 vlog is ready for you to preview. All right. And, uh, you know, tomorrow is going to be do some videos and recipe day, you know, work on some different stuff like that, get caught up on like editing videos, that kind of stuff. I don't have any cutting tomorrow. But... The one thing I did find out when we contacted the place for the uh, full share of beef that we're getting, mm -hmm. I said to him, like, hey, I can't pick it up on the 27th. I can pick it up on the 3rd. And they're like, well, you'll have to wait for the next one. Which we were okay to do. Which we were okay to do, except for it is a three and a half hour ride each way to right. go pick it up. And so she contacted me this morning and said that, no, 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 we're going to have you pick it up on December 3rd. Okay. So on our way home from camping, which is good because that's only a half hour out of our way. But I'm excited. But that means that we need to get moving on cleaning out that freezer, making sure that we have enough room, going through everything. Is there anything that's like really old that doesn't belong in there anymore? I'm actually glad for this timing because, yeah, yeah it's time to, to use up what we don't need and, yeah. you know, or get rid of the stuff that we want to use and then get rid of the things that Yeah, there's there's some things in there that got buried. And I'm sure, have you guys ever had that where... You put stuff in the bottom of a deep freezer or in the back of your freezer. And you're like, mm. And you forget about it, right? And then you go buy more stuff. And then when you're finally cleaning out the freezer, you're like, This don't look right. These sausages are four years old and all freezer burned. So there's not too much in there, but there's a few things in there that, yeah, unfortunately we waste a little bit of money, but they were like it's clearance time. things. They were our special needs. You'd go to the store and there's a whole bunch of special meat. But you and really you buy it and freeze it. You really needed to eat it in the parking lot. Yeah. It's that special. Well, I think this is going to be a short vlog because I want to finish up work. I do want to set up my new computer because I did get a thing that I have to get my old one shipped out. Otherwise, I get charged because I am doing like a trade-in. They gave me more money as a trade-in than I could get in actually selling it. Oh, wow. So I don't really want to be charged that trade-in thing. So no. That's my plan for this evening. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.